untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at a black white snow treasure control deck featuring three copies of Lisa Forgotten Archangel as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. The 5 mana 4 5 legendary angel has flying and lifelink and says whenever another non-token creature you control dies, return that card to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step, and if a creature an opponent controls would die, exile it instead. So Lisa synergizes very nicely with any sacrifice effects, like our Priest of Haunted Edge, the 2 mana 04, that we can tap and sacrifice to give an opposing creature minus X minus X until end of turn, where X is the number of snow lands we control, can only be used at sorcery speed, so if we activate our Priest we can take out an opposing creature and maybe get it back thanks to our Lisa. Same goes with our Skullport Merchant, the 1-4 that makes a treasure when it enters a battlefield, allowing us to maybe play Lisa on turn 4, and for 1 on a black we can sacrifice another creature or treasure to draw a card, so that can allow us to sacrifice some of our creatures, like Eye Twitch or Shambling Ghast, while getting them back with Lisa and generating a small advantage. Now when building around Lisa, at first I wanted to explore the synergy with Linvala, since it also pairs well with Lisa, as Linvala can protect Lisa, and then if we sacrifice Linvala while Lisa's in play, we get her back end of turn, so those two work well with each other, but I didn't quite find the other pieces to make a coherent deck, so we ended up with just a black-white deck instead. And then to complement Lisa, we also have three copies of Kaya, the 5 mana Planeswalker starts out at 5 loyalty, can minus 3 to exile target non land permanent, and then the plus 1 is similar to Lisa's passive ability, putting a ghost form counter on up to one target non token creature, and when that creature dies or is put into exile, we get to put it back into our hands and generate a 1 1 white spirit creature token with flying, and then the minus 7 can also be game winning. And then looking at the rest of our deck at 1 mana, we've got two copies of Eye Twitch, a 1-1 flyer that when it dies allows us to learn, grabbing one of our seven sideboarded lessons, including environmental sciences to gain a bit of life and find a land, reduce the memory as removal, introduction to prophecy for card draw, two copies of mascot exhibition as an extra finisher, and then confront the past to get back our planeswalker or take out opposing planeswalkers. Then we've got the full playset of Shambling Ghast, a 1-1 that when it dies gives an opposing creature minus 1 minus 1 until end of turn, or we can generate a treasure token allowing us to ramp into our powerful 5 drops. And then the perfect combo with Shambling Ghast is Deadly Dispute on turn 2, sacrificing another creature or artifact as an additional cost, and then we get to draw 2 and generate a treasure. So Ghast into Dispute allows us to play a 5 drop on turn 3. Then we've got the Priest and the full place at a Vanishing Verse as a well-positioned removal spell at the moment. Exiles target a monocolored permanent at instant speed, so this shines against the mono-white and mono-green aggro decks, one of the best answers to old growth troll in the format. The only card that misses in those decks is opposing copies of Faceless Haven. Then at 3 mana we already mentioned Skullport Merchant, and then two copies of Redan, God of the Worthy, which is also quite well positioned at the moment. Against the various snow aggro decks, all the opponent's lands will come into play tapped, and against Epiphany combo, non-creature spells the opponent tries to cast with mana value 4 or greater will cost 2 generic mana or more to cast. And then we've got two copies of Elite Spellbinder, the 3-1 flyer that when it enters lets us look at the opponent's hand and exile a non-land card from it that the opponent has to pay 2 additional mana to cast. And then we've got our 5 drops and finally 3 copies of Blood on the Snow as a nice sweeper either destroying all creatures or all planeswalkers. And then we get to return a creature or planeswalker card with mana value X or less from our graveyard to the battlefield, where X is the amount of snow mana spent to cast it. And our entire mana base is made up of snow lands, not really for blood on the snow, but more so for Priest of Haunted Edge, which can't really afford to have many non-snow lands in play. And then we've got two copies of Faceless Haven as an extra creature land, full playset of Snowfield Sinkhole, 11 snow-covered swamps and 8 snow-covered plains. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, and uh, well, our hand's got a game plan. It's going to be decent against a creature-heavy deck, ramping into turn 5 blood on the snow, so I'll try it. Turn 1 planes into Usher, don't mind seeing that. Into a turn to Aspirant, putting a counter on Usher. Priest is not a bad top deck. So 
So now we gotta hope our opponent doesn't have their own Raidan, although we could potentially take her out with our priest. Usher four power to attack past our priests, so we'll soak up one damage. And then play merchants and probably just take out Usher here, prevent taking too much damage. Even though now uh, Raidan could be more problematic. It's gonna be Intrepid Adversary, that's fine. So no attacks for the opponent this turn. Next turn they can pump the Adversary, but then I can just chump with the Sculpert Merchant and sack it to Dispute, which sets up our Sweeper nicely. Could technically fire up Faceless Haven as well. Uh, Skyclave gonna try and exile merchants, so that's not gonna work out for them. And then I guess there's no point in leaving Haven untapped since we don't have the snow mana to activate it, but I guess we can pretend. I wasn't gonna cast Vanishing Verse even if I drew it, so this is fine. Next turn I get to wipe the board and get back my Skullport Merchant, most likely. Now I'm flooding out a little bit, but we can use Merchant to sack our treasures to draw more cards. And we've got a backup Sweeper in hand, so don't hate my position, just need to find one of our 5 mana plays to start closing out the game. Brutal Cathar to exile the merchants, that's fine. And a dispute, so I could cast dispute, sacking a treasure. See what else we pick up. Alright, vanishing verse. And then I'll just exile the Cathar now. So we can still activate Merchants. As we see another Aspirant. And it's just a matter of time before we find some more action. There's Lisa, perfect. That's going to help stabilize our life total nicely. Now Merchant cannot sacrifice itself, but if I chum block with it, I could get it back with Lisa. And then Blood on the Snow gets Lisa back as well. And at 5 mana, Lisa dodges Skyclave Apparition. It's going to be Elite Spellbinder, exiling Blood on the Snow, that's fine. Can still cast it for 8 mana. Alright, another priest. So, I have to make a decision here. Because if I play priests with the idea of holding back the spellbinder, they can of course make it up to 5 power to attack past Lisa. So then I'm still trading, whereas I could just attack with Lisa, gain 4, and then pull the trigger on Blood on the Snow, get Lisa back, and we're still in fine shape. So I think that's what I'm gonna do here. Especially if the opponent has 4 mana and another Intrepid Adversary, they could uh, potentially present a lot of damage. So... 8 mana blood on the snow. And get our Lisa back. And we'll get merchants in our hand as well. So nothing of value was lost. Sun Gold Sentinel to combo with the 1 mana Stonebinders Familiar. Can start exiling stuff out of our graveyard. 
but uh, we get to play merchants plus priests and probably attack with Faceless Haven as well here. And start closing out the game. And then Priests plus Lisa is pretty difficult for the Mono White deck to overcome. Opponent goes for the trade. And we still get our Haven back end of turn. Yeah, dodging Skyclave Apparition at 5 mana, a big deal in this matchup. They need their Brutal Cathar, but it's not like we don't have removal ourselves. Portable Hole can try to exile my Priests, but I can sacrifice it instead. That way I get to recycle it with Lisa. So right now, two of the best performing best of one decks in standard include mono white aggro and mono green aggro. And these are the two decks we're trying to beat by playing this black white strategy. So if you expect a lot of mono white and mono green, this is not a bad place to be. Now you could get matched against, let's say, an Izzet Dragons deck or the various Elrond's Epiphany combo decks. Those will be a pretty tough matchup for any black-white control deck out there, so those are matchups we're trying to avoid. So that's the call you have to make when bringing this deck to a tournament, for instance. Could also main phase disputes just to get my creature back in hand. There's Redan, a little bit late to the party. Just dies to my priests. And then, do we have lethal? I think I'm one damage short. And our opponent packs it in. Sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Could use a couple extra lanes along the way, but we've got early interaction with Priest and Vanishing Verse. And sure, let's play a Priests. Presumably up against the Mono Green Snow deck. So I want to keep Verse as an answer to Troll. Priest can take out Sculpture. And we'll play another one. So yeah, missing my land drops could be disastrous. We do have Shambling Ghast that can make a treasure. Vanishing Verse also potentially an answer to Ranger class. But let's have a look with the Spellbinder first. Opponent stuck on two lands as well. So they've got kind of the usual suspects. Now Troll could be protected by Veil, so that could be problematic, but our opponent's most likely just gonna play Troll as soon as they get 3 mana. So I can exile it, so making Chariot or Ren and 7 more expensive is kind of what I'm looking at here. And uh, I think I'll go with Chariots. And just kill the wolf right now. So they can't protect it with Veil or start leveling up Ranger class. Right, another Ranger class. Not really what I wanted to see. So now the opponent isn't necessarily gonna play a troll for us to Vanishing Verse. And Shambling Gas doesn't trade for the wolf if they level up Ranger class. So maybe my best hope is the opponent drawing the land and playing troll anyway instead of leveling up. But still want to get the ghast out there so I can maybe leverage Lisa. The fact that they have Veil means they can potentially protect the turn where they try to Blizzard Brawl. So we'll see how things play out. Opponent does level up Ranger class. 
So I could jump just to make a treasure so I can play Lisa, which I don't hate. Although I guess they could go Snakeskinville into Blizzard Brawl and kill Lisa. Yeah, I guess that's potentially uh, a problem here if they draw the third Snowland. But I think I still go for it. So it's the alternative. Play Priests. And then keep up Verse. And next turn go for Lisa. I do have a Blood on the Snow to eventually get her back. Hmm, tricky spot. Yeah, they still need the third snow lane to make that play, because otherwise they don't get the one extra power on Blizzard Brawl. But I guess they could Veil, attack, put an extra counter on the wolf with the Ranger class. And then it's a 5-5. Five, five. Alright, let's wait then. Play Priests. And I'm not blocking with the Spellbinder, so might as well attack. And we'll see what they do. The wolf attacks, I'll take four. They could still try to kill the priest here. And then if I vanishing verse, they can respond with snakeskin veil. Or they could just go with the Inscription as well. All right, goes for Blizzard Brawl with Veil backup, but they're killing Spellbinder and not Priest. So if I let this happen with a plan of next turn playing Lisa, and then using Priest on Wolf, they protect with Veil. I do get my Priest back, but then next turn they can Inscription fight Lisa and kill her, which is not ideal. So if I... Vanishing Verse now, the opponent veils, and then I'm banking pretty hard on drawing a land, which not only gives my Priest minus 5, minus 5, but also lets me play Lisa. But if I miss, it's kind of a disaster. It's a tricky spot once again. I think I let this happen. I did not draw the lane, so I'm glad I didn't go for that line. But now I can go Lisa, use Priests, force them to Veil anyway. Next turn they kill my Lisa. It's not ideal. So I think I'll just play Ghast and pass. And then wait on using the Priest until I can get the Priest back with Lisa at the very least. And then Gas is fine to chum block to make a treasure. Still want to draw an extra snow land here. So the priest can give minus five. And then I would have Vanishing Verse backup to protect my Lisa. Alright, there we go. So Operation is a go. Play Lisa. Use Priests. And then I assume my opponent will either Veil or Inscription Fighting Lisa. Not sure which is better for me here. Ah, opponent lets it go, so that worked out. Wolf gets exiled with Lisa's ability. Get our Priest back and now we have a 4-5 Flying Lifelink. Vanishing Verse helps us protect against another fight spell. So I'm liking my chances. Okay, play Priests, attack for four, and there's no need for me to Vanishing Verse preemptively. Can wait for the opponent to go for a fight spell and then respond. 
Hoping they didn't draw another veil, I guess. And then the priest can just keep taking out pack leader. Their opponent not hitting a third land drop is a little bit unfortunate for them, although things could have played out a little bit more smoothly for us if they did in a weird way. Get to untap. Opponent's discarding to hand size gets rid of a chariot. And I uh, guess I'll use the priest here. Do they want a veil? It's going to be inscription, putting two counters on it, but we have six snow lands, so it's still going to die here. And then I get to animate Haven. Hit for eight. And that does it. All right, so kind of an interesting game. Wish my opponent wasn't stuck on two lands, but uh, still give us a good fight here. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Could use an extra land or two, but double ghast can make treasure. Looks like we're up against another green deck. And a ranger class. Not our favorite to drop to see on the other side of the battlefield. Let's play priest. And then ideally we can keep a clean battlefield when we play Raidan, so we don't have to fear a fight spell. Troll, I'll gladly exile. So definitely exiling the troll. Now the question is what to do with the wolf token. Do I keep it around? Opponent could level up ranger class and then finish off priest with like a blizzard brawl. It is my last removal spell is kind of the issue here. So I think I hang on to my priest, just exile troll, play around snakeskin veil. And then maybe next turn, play Raidan and use Priest. Could see Chariot here. Which, you know, was a reason to get Raidan in play as soon as possible. To make that two more expensive. Alright, opponent's leveling up Ranger class. I could also jump with Ghast, make a treasure, in the hopes of drawing a land, so I can play Kaya, exile a wolf, as well as use a priest, so our opponent doesn't have any creatures in play to pressure my planeswalker. Which I don't hate. Alright, perfect, so... Let's enact our game plan here. And hope there's no hasty frog hemoth in our future. When I say go, you go. And then Raidan's a pretty annoying permanent to get past, especially once we start plusing Kaya. Primal Adversary can almost attack with a hasty wolf, but it's going to be tapped. So just a 4-3. Does trample, so that's one way to get Kaya's loyalty decreased. So I'll play Raidan. Plus on Raidan. Could also plus on Shambling Ghast, I suppose, but this seems fine. Opponent Snow Lands will come into play tapped. But I'm guessing they've got a fight spell they can use here. Just another old growth troll. 
So 6, 5 adversary, if I double block, we still can take it out with a minus 1, minus 1 from Ghast. But I would save my Kaya, which does seem worth it. Get Redan back. And then hope to top deck like a Blood on the Snow here. Another Ghast. So now what? Play Redan, play Ghast. Probably still keep plussing on Redan. Although with a backup, maybe I should diversify. Nah. Yeah, I need another Vanishing Verse or a reset with Blood on the Snow. Lisa could be okay, but a single fight spell and uh, Lisa's gone. Uh, so we're probably going to lose Kaya, so we won't be able to plus on Lisa. So I won't be able to save Kaya no matter what. I could triple block old growth troll and be able to take it out with a minus one, minus one. It seems fine. And the uh, level 3 on Ranger class is still going to be problematic. So, yeah, not loving my position here. Just got to buy time until we find Blood on the Snow, but then Ranger class is going to start providing card advantage in the meantime. Running 7 2 now. was able to cast it thanks to the extra mana from Troll, because, of course, Raidan makes it cost two more. And yeah, the counters from Ranger class means no profitable blocks. So I'm kind of all in on finding a Blood on the Snow at this point. Um, so I guess I might as well save as much damage as possible. All right, there's Lisa. Probably too little too late. I can still play her so I don't die. And that's the creature we would be getting back with Blood on the Snow, or we could get Kaya back to exile Ren and Seven. Chariots. Yep, good combo with Ren and Seven. So yeah, our opponent had a few too many non-creature permanence and we didn't even find our sweeper to begin with this game. So this one didn't go according to plan. Although we were close to getting to uh, leverage Kaya. The trampling adversary had other plans. Would have been able to chum block like a Kazandu Mammoth more easily. So 16, so the life gain keeps me alive here. And uh, yeah, we'll take 12 damage essentially. But even a blood on the snow now with Faceless Haven is probably not going to be good enough. Alright, and it's just a Haven to draw. All right, GG's.
All right, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Definitely better suited against a creature deck than what looks to be a blue-red deck. Um, let's play a sinkhole. Now, Spellbinder is decent against most blue decks. All right, it's something slightly different with a turn two stowaway. So for now, maybe play Priest as an answer. Hold on to Vanishing Verse for the time being. Shambling Gas plus Tapland wouldn't quite be an answer here since the Stowaway can attack past it. So our opponent gets to loot. And they're probably just going to pass a turn to let it switch to nighttime and keep up counter spells. But priests can already answer the Stowaway. Alright, they're just gonna kill the priest instead then. Fair enough. Uh, so I can Spellbinder to have a look and ensure that they cannot counter my verse once they do transform Stowaway into the Seafaring Werewolf or I can exile it now so I don't have to worry about it. Getting Spellbinder in play would start applying a bit of pressure of our own, which is nice. It lets me know what's up. So I'm kind of lacking Spellbinder here. Plus there's a tiny chance they would have a one mana counter spell. Alright, Zareth, Negate, Malison, Power Ward Kill. Pretty decent hand. Making Negate too more expensive still allows them to keep it up if they draw land. So maybe we just choose Zareth and make it a lot more difficult for the opponent to uh, make use of it. as they wouldn't be able to use a 4-mana ability, so it's essentially a 7-mana play now. Opponent discarding Meat Hook Massacre. Yeah. Opponent lets it transform to Nighttime, all attack. And then... Probably just gonna play a tapped Sinkhole and pass. My opponent goes for end of turn power word kill. I can dispute plus vanishing verse. Alternatively, I could just cast two spells here, which also switches it back to daytime. So do I believe my opponent's gonna try and kill Spellbinder if I just pass here? Because if they don't, I could be in trouble. If they go for it, then dispute into verse looks quite decent. Not entirely sure. I think they're going to be quite protective of Werewolf and they're not going to tap out. So in that case, I'm kind of liking Merchant plus Shambling Ghasts. That way I get to cast two spells and flip it back to daytime so the opponent doesn't get to draw a card for free. Alright, opponent kills Merchant. Because Merchant could have sacrificed Shambling Gas to take out the Stowaway. But at least it's not going to draw a card. And Deadly Dispute Sacking Gas is still a perfectly fine answer. Sacrificing Gas is part of the additional cost, so even if they counter Dispute, we still get to minus one, minus one. Oof, and our opponent drew another Zareth. That's unfortunate. Alright, so that gets to steal my merchant here. Okay. Well, that changes things quite a bit. Can't even Vanishing Verse Zareth. So now what? Can keep up the pressure with Spellbinder, or I can keep both creatures back to block Zareth. Which I guess could work. Yeah, that seems fine. Opponent sends in both. Interesting. 
So if I go for the double block, they would have had to draw something here to make this not work, and I guess even if they did, I could still deadly dispute. Alright, damage happens. And I'll make a treasure, which I can also sack to the dispute. I guess my opponent was happy to get rid of my shambling gas, so the stowaway could maybe survive more easily. So, that resolves. I'll dispute. Could wait until my turn to dispute, that way it also switches back to daytime. Alright, Priest is also a clean answer. So if I verse, they'll negate. So is that a play I want to make? My opponent is somewhat close to just casting Zareth at 7 mana. So that's also something we need to keep in mind. I think going for dispute on treasure is fine, maybe bait out to negate. Alright, that worked. Switches it back to daytime. And then I might want to Vanishing Verse Sculpert Merchant as well, before killing the werewolf with a priest. Although we'll see what happens. Because priest is an answer to Zareth, whereas Verse is not. But of course they would get an attack with Zareth in the meantime. Which is not ideal. Discards Malison. And Thirst to take out my Priest. Yeah, that happens. At least it stays daytime. And next turn my opponent can cast Zareth. Land the draw, so I'm in a pretty bad spot. Opponent has double all of the Storm Giants as well, they can start firing up. So if I kill the Stowaway, then they can just sack it to Merchant Draw card and get further ahead that way. If I kill the merchant, and there's still the stowaway to worry about. But at least it's not going to turn to nighttime right away, but my opponent's just going to pass and play Zareth end of turn to transform a stowaway. So I guess I'll keep it daytime and just exile the stowaway now. Or I could wait until the opponent's turn, I guess. That way if they want to use the merchant, at least they won't be able to play Zareth that turn. Alright, let's do that instead. Do it in their upkeep. I don't think they're sacking the treasure, because they need it to cast Zareth. But upkeep so they can draw into a counter spell. Alright, so at least I don't have to worry about Zareth this turn. Alright, got a top deck here. Finding Lisa would be nice. Although with all of the Storm Giants, I'm under quite a bit of pressure. It's just a priest. Well, I guess that's an answer to Zareth, but yeah, the creature lanes are gonna make the difference here. Opponent could sack the treasure now that they have land 7. Yeah, the second Zareth got us pretty good. And I'm not sure what I can top deck to get out of it. Another Thirst kills Priest. At least Zareth is off my back for another turn cycle. But next turn, Hall of the Storm Giants is just lethal. They can replay Hermit. 
Redan. Doesn't do much for me, but I guess I'll play her. The hall comes rumbling in, puts me to one. Can answer it with Vanishing Verse, which we did just top deck. So I guess that's uh, an answer here. Can pay for the ward. Wait for them to attack. So the land is tapped and cannot be used for mana. Spellbinder. Okay, maybe chum block the other hall. As we see disdainful stroke Malison. Uh not sure if it matters too much. Maybe take the stroke so they can't keep it up. Or maybe Malison actually, because Malison by itself would be lethal if they run it out. Alongside maybe activating Hall. But uh, yeah, we're in trouble. Opponent's still at 13. Not gonna close out the game before they eventually get us. opponent off the hall plan onto the Malison plan now. So I gotta draw another removal spell. Hermits can maybe protect the Malison. Haven the draw, that's not gonna cut it. Hit for two. Here, if I play Haven, my opponent's probably just going to activate Hall attack with everyone, ignoring the Malison's ability so they can beat a removal spell. If I play Haven, I've got an additional blocker, but then Malison being unblockable just kills me, so... Doesn't really matter. Alright, jeez. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand, I think. Ghasts and merchants to ramp into Lisa. And then we've got merchants as a nice sacrifice engine, which plays well with Lisa. Right, turn on forests. Into a pack leader. So we'll see if there's removal here or more threats. Ideally, I can play Lisa and not risk my opponent's fighting her to death, which they could with an old growth troll. So how about just play priests and pass, and then I have the option of also sacrificing shambling gas to make an extra treasure, or casting verse on the troll if needed. If they send in troll and pack leader, they would get pack tactics draw card, Although then I could double block pack leader, give it minus one, minus one with a gas to finish it off. So I think that's a fine exchange. And then if they pump pack leader to kill merchants, am I okay with that? Alternatively, I could verse the troll, hope they don't have snakeskin veil. Yeah, let's let them attack. Right, just a troll attacking, I think that's the preferred outcome here. That way I can maybe use Priest once Lisa's in play.
Sculptor is acceptable. And I'll make a treasure. So land would be a good draw here. Opponent pausing, so maybe they've got an inscription. So I could play Lisa, or I could take a slightly slower approach. I could just use the priest right now on the pack leader anyway to prevent any pack tactics shenanigans. And then if they go for inscription as a pump spell, they could still save it. So kind of a tough spot here. Might have to play priests and pass. I could dispute sacking a treasure right now just to try and hit my land drop. And then land 5 means they cannot save pack leader with inscription. They could still save it with snakeskin veil. Alright. I guess we'll try this. And then play back a priest. Right. They've got inscription, but we've got five snow lanes, so... Not sure about that one. Play priests. And pass. Our opponent was probably planning to make that inscription play when we had four snow lands in play, but just didn't readjust after we found a fifth. Frog Hemoth, okay. I have two creatures, so it could grow up to a 6-6. Six, six. So it might be large enough to survive the priest activation. So then the question is, do I want a Vanishing Verse? This is a good window for me to play Lisa, activate priest, get priest back. But if I don't draw Snowland, then... Priest is not going to be large enough to kill Frog Hemoth, so I guess I could just chump it with Merchants and give that up. Just some guarantee to play Lisa, activate Priest, kill Frog Hemoth, and then I guess we're still hoping not to face a Blizzard Brawl. Although if I draw White Source, I can have Vanishing Verse in response. It's an interesting position. I think I'm chumping with Merchants. Right, shambling gas, not ideal. So play Lisa. Priest Frog Hemoth. And play another Priest. And yeah, hope they don't have a Blizzard Brawl. And so we won't be able to punish it with Vanishing Verse in response. Gas can eventually make more white mana. So had a bit of mana issues here. Troll attacks, I'll take it. They could still represent another pump spell. So it probably means they don't have Blizzard Brawl. Another troll, that's fine. And another Sculptor. Alright. I think we're in the driver's seat now can kill trolls left and right and start racing with Lisa. Could also exile one of the trolls with Vanishing Verse. Although keeping that as an instant speed answer is also tempting. I could play Raidan to prevent any expensive non-creature spells from hitting the battlefield, although they do have double Sculptor. So I don't think we're really preventing that. And I guess with Lisa in play, we're also exiling the troll, so... The opponent doesn't get the uh, enchantment part of it, which is nice. Yeah, let's just uh, protect our queen here. Knowing that the opponent's only removal is in the form of fight spells means that as long as we keep a vanishing verse, we should be safe. I guess fight spell plus snakeskin veil could potentially foil that plan, but didn't seem to have it before.
unnatural growth I can exile with Vanishing Verse before it triggers. So go full control just to make sure. That's something priests cannot handle. And I guess I'll take four. Deal with the trolls, another unnatural growth of the top isn't as backbreaking. Did they have the snakeskin veil here? Looks like they do. Alright, fair enough. So now they potentially have a window to still draw a removal spell to kill Lisa, which would be unfortunate. Probably still play Raidan as a creature. And then if I go up to 12, they draw another unnatural growth. This would be 10 trample. I think we'll still be okay. All right, opponent's got a one-turn window to find a fight spell. Ranger class is acceptable. We've got a fast enough clock here that we should be able to kill them before the card advantage from level 3 takes over. And I'll take 6. Two turn clock in the air. And our opponent's creatures won't be able to fight Lisa as easily. I guess an attack plus a kicked inscription would still do it, but that's about it. So yeah, when building this deck, this is kind of the synergy I had in mind to beat the monocolored aggro decks. The late game of cycling priests with a Lisa in play while getting out of range of any go wide attack thanks to the extra lifelink our deck isn't really suited to compete against the epiphany decks all that well Raidan helps but usually not enough but i think we've been able to show here the power of lisa especially in conjunction with priest so yeah I think going forward, this might be a good way to approach these black-white snow decks. We did face kind of this unusual blue-black deck, which sadly we weren't able to defeat. But as far as meta decks go, the mono-white, mono-green decks out there, I think we've got a pretty decent matchup against Epiphany. As I've said, you're probably going to be at a disadvantage. So it's definitely a metagame choice when bringing this to the table. But for now, I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.